The story begins with a hard-working and studious student named Rumi Yokoi, sitting in the row next to Toshinari Seki, who never pays any attention to his surroundings. Yokoi always tries to fit in with the class, but Seki does something so distracting that Yokoi can only watch Seki. One day, as the history teacher begins the day's lesson, Yokoi becomes increasingly aware of Seki's indifference to the subject matter. Instead of taking notes or participating, Seki is engaged in an intricate and mesmerizing domino game with a pile of pencil erasers meticulously arranged on his desk. Despite Yokoi's inner resolve to concentrate on her studies, she finds herself drawn into the fascinating spectacle unfolding next to her. The humor comes from the stark contrast between Yokoi's earnest attempts to concentrate on her studies and Seki's nonchalant devotion to his form of entertainment. As the domino game becomes more complex, Yokoi becomes increasingly engrossed in Seki's antics. While Yokoi is busy watching Seki, the teacher calls her to read the next lesson from the book, but Yokoi does not respond, so the teacher angrily shouts her name and Yokoi immediately stands up, which also petrifies Seki, causing him to drop one of his erasers on the dominoes, almost destroying his domino structure. But Seki manages to control it, and when Yokoi sees Seki, she notices that he looks at her in anger. As she is responsible for this, the teacher asks Yokoi if something is wrong with her, but she assures him that she's fine. A few minutes later, when Yokoi sees Seki's desk again, she realizes that Seki has finally finished his domino structure, but she is shocked to see that Seki has placed fireworks at the end of the domino table. She wants to stop him, but instead she sits down, and when the last domino hits the fireworks, and she realizes that it's all in Seki's head, she puts her head down on the desk with a sigh of relief. Meanwhile, the teacher notices Yokoi's change in behavior and asks her if she intends to attend the class at all. Yokoi tries to explain that Seki has been distracting her with his domino work the whole time, but in a masterly display of skill, Seki manages to avoid detection. Yokoi then realizes that she has spent the entire lesson mesmerized by Seki's time-wasting activities, leaving her in awe of his ability to evade the teacher's notice. The next day, Yokoi notices that Seki is again playing with something, but this time Seki's attention shifts from dominoes to a completely new and unexpected activity. As the teacher begins the lesson, Yokoi notices Seki assembling what appears to be a miniature shogi, Japanese chess, board on his desk. Intrigued, she watches as Seki meticulously places the pieces, setting the stage for what turns out to be an intricate and strategic game. Seki's shogi setup becomes a miniature battlefield on his desk, complete with the traditional shogi pieces. Despite the silence and lack of verbal communication, Seki's concentration and determination to immerse himself in the fictional world of shogi is palpable. The contrast between the gravity with which Seki approaches the game and the simplicity of the materials he uses creates a whimsical atmosphere. When Seki moves the first pawn, his devotion to the game causes him to suddenly destroy the other pawn, which makes a loud noise that attracts everyone's attention. As the students try to figure out who made the noise, their teacher orders them to pay attention to him. Yokoi then tries to tell Seki to make less noise, but he doesn't listen. As the game progresses, Yokoi, initially intent on studying, finds herself unable to resist getting involved and becomes increasingly invested in the unfolding shogi match, silently cheering for the pieces she considers to be the underdogs. Yokoi is torn between her commitment to her studies and the irresistible allure of Seki's unconventional activities. This internal conflict is at the heart of the humor, as Yokoi's curiosity and Seki's determination clash within the confines of the classroom. The contrast between Seki's stoic concentration and Yokoi's animated reactions adds a layer of comedic depth to the narrative. The narrative not only highlights Seki's creativity in transforming mundane activities into sources of entertainment, but also subtly delves into the evolving dynamic between Yokoi and Seki. As the shogi game reaches its climax, Seki makes unexpected moves, and Yokoi becomes emotionally invested in the outcome, creating tension within the confines of a silent classroom. Despite Yokoi's initial resistance, there's a growing sense of fascination as she becomes increasingly involved in Seki's time-killing pursuits. The humor reaches its peak when Yokoi, unable to resist any longer, interferes with Seki's board game by throwing her eraser at one of Seki's hands. And when the eraser hits the pawn, it slips out of Seki's hand and into the window. Seki then looks at Yokoi with anger, as she is the one responsible for this. The next day, as the English teacher continues to write on the blackboard during class, Yokoi and her classmates are also taking notes. When Yokoi looks at Seki, she sees something very unexpected, that Seki is actually writing the notes and is surprised by him. But then she realizes that Seki is just cleaning his desk with a cloth instead of writing notes. 
Yokoi thinks to herself that Seki loves his desk so much, even though he never uses it for studying. Seki then pulls out all the professional tools to clean his desk. He then fills all the holes and scratches in his desk with a cement-like material. Seki then grabs the scraper and removes the extra material from the desk, which also flies in the direction of Yokoi, who is already watching him again. Yokoi avoids it from approaching her. Seki then uses polishing wax and a brush to clean and polish the desk and starts to rub it. A few minutes later, Seki finally finishes cleaning it, and when Yokoi looks at his desk, she is shocked to see the sun reflected on it, and Seki can now see himself in the desk. Meanwhile, Yokoi wonders how he can polish something until it turns into a mirror. Yokoi then continues to write her notes, but she notices that Seki keeps looking at her. When Yokoi looks at Seki, she realizes that Seki also offers to clean her desk, whereupon Yokoi defends her desk and tells Seki that she doesn't want her desk to be cleaned. Seki first offers her 500 yen, but she refuses. He then offers her 500 yen, but more cleaned. Yokoi tells him that she won't let him do anything, and he has nothing. Then he can listen to the teacher. Seki is disappointed and continues to polish his desk. Yokoi feels bad and takes pity on him by giving Seki her blackboard, telling him that if he wants to clean something so badly, he can use it. Seki takes the board and immediately starts cleaning it. After cleaning the board, Seki gives it back to Yokoi, and when Yokoi looks at the board, she also sees her reflection in the board as a mirror. She is satisfied, but suddenly she feels static electricity on her body. Yokoi screams when she feels the electricity, drawing everyone's attention. The teacher asks Yokoi if she is all right. Yokoi assures the teacher that everything is fine. That's when Yokoi thought she would never be nice to Seki-kun again. The next day at school, as the teacher begins his lesson, Seki-kun takes a wooden bowl out of his bag and immerses himself in the strategic and traditional board game of Gomoku, a Japanese version of Connect 5. When Yokoi sees Seki playing a Go board game, she's happy because she doesn't know the rules and can finally concentrate on her studies instead of watching Seki. However, as always, Seki's unique approach to simple activities draws her attention once again. Despite her initial attempts to concentrate on her studies, Yokoi once again finds herself drawn into Seki-kun's world. His carefree way of killing time becomes more and more fascinating to her. Yokoi, Seki-kun's hardworking classmate, observes his latest diversion with a mixture of curiosity and frustration. Seki-kun sets up a makeshift Gomoku board on his desk, demonstrating his attention to detail and creativity. Yokoi's attention is captured by the engaging and visually appealing game setup. As the Gomoku match progresses, Seki-kun employs unconventional tactics that turn the game into a dynamic and amusing spectacle. His strategic use of the environment adds to the complexity of the match and draws Yokoi into the excitement of his makeshift game. As Yokoi watches Seki's unique moves, the teacher calls her and tells her to stop daydreaming. Yokoi tries to explain to the teacher that it was all because of Seki-kun, whose actions were distracting her from the lesson. But when she looks at Seki-kun, she sees that he has already hidden his things. Nevertheless, Yokoi insists on telling the teacher about Seki-kun and shows him her notebook, in which she has accidentally drawn the fight from the Go game instead of writing notes. After seeing the drawing, the teacher inquires about it. Yokoi tries to explain, but the situation makes it seem as if she is the one who is fooling around. The next day, the students gather in the science lab. Yokoi eagerly takes notes from the teacher, expecting a day of normal lessons. Her hopes are dashed, however, when she observes Seki-kun once again engrossed in a creative and amusing way to pass the time. This time, it is the seemingly innocent activity of using erasers to create intricate stamp designs. Yokoi, perhaps naively, thinks that Seki's project might be put off by the presence of Uzawa-kun sitting next to him. She thinks that Seki might be wary of Uzawa and fear him more than the prospect of being caught by a teacher. This thought gives Yokoi a sense of relief, and she anticipates a quiet and uneventful day in class. However, her optimism quickly fades as she resumes writing her notes. Seki has already carved the erasir considerably, turning it into what appears to be a real seal. Unbeknownst to Yokoi, Seki's creativity knows no bounds, and he is determined to make the eraser look like a real seal. Just as Seki reaches for his chisel to continue his project, he notices Uzawa-kun curiously inspecting his belongings. Uzawa, looking for ways to kill time, discovers Seki's stamp. He mischievously places Seki's hand on the stamp and then imprints it on his notebook. Uzawa teasingly declares Seki a suspect, turning the classroom into a playful detective scene. All the while, Yokoi silently observes the unfolding scenario. With a quick movement, Seki cleans his hand with paper and reveals a case made from an eraser. He carefully places his seal inside and covers it, creating the illusion of a normal eraser. Yokoi, marveling at Seki's ingenuity, 
thinks it is the perfect custom-made eraser seal case. When the teacher announces that the notes on the blackboard will be part of an upcoming test, Yokoi and Uzawa-kun quickly shift their focus to writing them down. In the process, Uzawa-kun, who does not have an eraser of his own, unwittingly takes the eraser from Seki's hand, the same eraser that contains Seki's intricate seal, cleverly disguised. In an attempt to erase a mistake, the seal crumbles into pieces, eliciting a sense of pity from Yokoi. As the teacher erases the blackboard, Yokoi once again finds herself unable to concentrate on her studies as the day takes an unexpected turn, leaving her with no notes and a mix of emotions. The school day begins with the announcement of a disaster drill in the classroom. As the students prepare for the routine drill, Seki-kun sees an opportunity for some creative diversion. Seki-kun puts his own unique spin on the school's routine disaster drill. Instead of following the serious and conventional approach to the drill, Seki-kun turns it into an imaginative scenario involving a family of robots. He takes out a set of miniature robot figures and, with meticulous attention to detail, creates a robot father, mother, and child, and stages a disaster scenario for his robotic creations on his desk. This unexpected twist immediately caught Yokoi's attention. Seki-kun's robot family faces the disaster of an earthquake, all staged on his desk with a touch of humor and creativity. The minimalist animation style focuses on the expressive reactions of the characters and the unfolding disaster scenes on Seki-kun's desk. As the disaster drill progresses, Yokoi, initially confused by Seki-kun's unconventional approach, becomes an unwitting spectator of his robotic drama. The contrast between the seriousness of the drill and Seki-kun's whimsical interpretation adds a layer of comedy. As the disaster drill scenario reaches its climax, all the students go down to the floor under the supervision of their teacher. And surprisingly, Seki-kun talks to other students, leaving his robot family to face the impending disaster. However, instead of resolving the situation in a responsible manner, Seki-kun doesn't notice his robot family and continues talking to the other student, while Yokoi, who is watching Seki, becomes increasingly frustrated with Seki-kun's lack of responsibility towards his robot family and decides to take matters into her own hands. She intervenes in the disaster scenario and tries to save the robot family from further harm. When the drill is over, they all return to their classes, and Seki looks at Yokoi, hoping that she will return his toys to him. But instead of returning the toys, she begins to take better care of them than Seki, showing him how to take care of toys. The next day, as the teacher begins his lesson, Yokoi observes Seki-kun diligently working as a post office within the classroom. He has set up a miniature postal system on his desk, complete with stamps, envelopes, and a mail delivery routine. Seki-kun takes on the role of postmaster, stamping notes with precision and delivering them to their intended recipients in a display of playful creativity. As Yokoi watches Seki-kun's elaborate note-passing operation unfold, she becomes fascinated by his commitment to transforming the ordinary into the extraordinary. She also receives a note-like letter from Tomaka-chan, in which she tells Yokoi that Seki is currently working as a postman, and that if anyone gives Seki-kun a note, he will stamp it. Yokoi then decides to take part in Seki-kun's note-passing spectacle. In an attempt to communicate with him, she writes a note to Seki-kun and tries to pass it on. Instead of a simple exchange, however, Seki-kun hands her a set of rules and regulations for note-passing, complete with instructions and guidelines. This comedic interlude adds an extra layer of amusement. Undeterred by Seki-kun's complicated regulations, Yokoi makes a valiant effort to follow the guidelines. She writes a note and carefully places it in the classroom's mailbox. However, in a twist of fate, Seki-kun forgets to check the mailbox before going home, leaving Yokoi's note undelivered and adding a touch of irony to the situation. Determined to ensure that her message reaches Seki-kun, Yokoi takes matters into her own hands. She writes another note and cleverly places it in Seki-kun's shoe drawer, hoping that he will discover it the next day. However, this act doesn't go unnoticed, as a curious classmate witnesses Yokoi's secret note delivery and misinterprets the situation, assuming a romantic relationship between Yokoi and Seki-kun. The narrative unfolds with Yokoi hoping to finally be able to concentrate on her studies after watching the game. Little does she know that Seki-kun has other plans. When Seki-kun, true to form, initiates another unconventional shogi tournament on his desk, this time introducing new elements to the game, Yokoi initially believes she can use the opportunity to catch up on her work. However, Seki-kun's unconventional approach to the game immediately grabs her attention. In a bizarre twist, Seki-kun introduces a pawn and a princess into the shogi game, deviating from the conventional rules. This unexpected move not only disrupts the traditional game, but also piques Yokoi's curiosity. And as Seki-kun orchestrates an unconventional battle on his desk, Yokoi becomes emotionally invested in the game, illustrating the imaginary shogi board in her mind 
and making it impossible for her to turn her attention back to her studies. As Yokoi watches Seiki-kun's unconventional shogi game, in a clever narrative twist, Yokoi becomes emotionally invested in the fate of the miniature shogi characters. As she watches the tournament, she imagines a dramatic and compelling backstory for each piece, adding depth to the otherwise whimsical scenario. This imaginative twist adds a layer of humor, emphasizing Yokoi's struggle to free herself from Seki-kun's mesmerizing interference. In a comic turn of events, Yokoi tries to interfere with Seki-kun's game. However, he cleverly places his book between them, creating a barrier that prevents Yokoi from interfering. Just as Yokoi resigns herself to her fate, the teacher unexpectedly calls on Seki-kun to read from his book. With Seki-kun momentarily distracted, Yokoi seizes the opportunity to take matters into her own hands. She throws the pawn into the midst of the other shogi pieces, causing chaos on the imaginary battlefield. This act of rebellion serves as Yokoi's amusing attempt to regain control of the situation and redirect Seki-kun's focus. The episode ends on a humorous note, as both Yokoi and Seki-kun manage to find the pages they are reading in the book. Yokoi, the hardworking student, notices Seki-kun engaged in an unexpected activity, knitting, the art of making things with yarn. Intrigued by this departure from the usual antics, Yokoi, an experienced knitter herself, becomes curious about what Seki-kun is making. Her internal monologue reveals her anticipation and interest in the world of knitting, wondering if Seki-kun's creation will be something traditional or perhaps something entirely unexpected. As Seki-kun's knitting project unfolds, it becomes clear that he is using special Afghan knitting needles to create a cute cactus plant. When Yokoi notices this, she thinks to herself that the Afghan needle is known for its unique thickness and soft outline. Yokoi, who considers herself a level 2 knitter, watches Seki-kun's progress with a mixture of surprise and admiration. The humor comes from the unexpected beauty of the knitted cactus, which contrasts with Yokoi's initial expectations. Her internal monologue reveals a mixture of awe and disbelief as she acknowledges that Seki-kun's craftsmanship has surpassed her expectations. In a moment of curiosity and appreciation, Yokoi decides to approach Seki-kun's desk to take a closer look at the knitted cactus. However, in a twist characteristic of Seki-kun's mischievous nature, he abruptly unravels the entire knitting project leaving Yokoi both shocked and disappointed. This sudden turn of events adds a touch of irony to the episode and highlights Seki-kun's penchant for unpredictability. This unexpected twist adds a touch of humor and shows Seki-kun's dedication to his unique brand of time-killing activities. The contrast between Yokoi's genuine appreciation of the knitted cactus and Seki-kun's willingness to unravel his work creates a comedic dynamic between the two characters. Discouraged, Yokoi asks Seki-kun to make the same cactus plant again, but despite her pleas, Seki doesn't respond and remains frozen in his seat. The next day at school, all the students gather in the art room for art class. Seki, as usual, takes his seat next to Yokoi and immerses himself in his imaginative activities. However, a new character is introduced, Sokuraku Goto, who sits behind Yokoi. Goto is keen to form a friendship with Yokoi but finds it difficult to do so, especially as they only seem to share a seat when they are outside their regular classroom. While Goto contemplates her desire to befriend Yokoi, Yokoi remains engrossed in observing Seki, who is playing a miniature game of golf on his worn-out desk. Unbeknownst to Yokoi, Goto misinterprets the dynamic between Yokoi and Seki as a romantic relationship. Although tempted to interfere, Goto resists, acknowledging her lack of friendship with Yokoi. When Seki prepares to put his small golf ball in the hole on Yokoi's side of the desk, Goto, who is watching the interaction from behind, once again misinterprets the situation. She believes that Yokoi and Seki are romantically involved and wonders whether she should reveal this information to others. The teacher then distributes a printout to the students, detailing the characteristics of each color. When Yokoi hands the printout to Goto, she accidentally hits Seki's small golf ball. Realizing her role in the disturbance, Yokoi apologizes to Seki, further fueling Goto's misunderstanding. Yokoi spots a red flag on the desk, which is typically used in golf to signal a hole. However, Goto interprets the flag differently, believing it to be a secret signal between Yokoi and Seki. Yokoi and Seki both reach under the desk to retrieve the tiny golf ball, but Goto misinterprets their actions and assumes they are engaged in something naughty. During the recess, Goto approaches Yokoi and expresses her concern about what she witnessed between her and Seki, suggesting that such activities shouldn't take place during class. Yokoi agrees, relieved that someone understands her point of view. Yokoi confides in Goto, explaining that Seki is always involved in such imaginative endeavors. Goto, however, with other thoughts in her head, outwardly supports Yokoi, 
assuring her that she is there for her. Feeling a sense of camaraderie, Yokoi extends an offer of friendship to Goto. Although Goto is happy to finally be friends with Yokoi, she can't help but feel that this newfound friendship has somehow distanced her from Yokoi even more than before. The next day, while the teacher is giving a lesson to the class, Yokoi realizes that she has already finished her work and doesn't need to repeat it. Seizing the opportunity, she looks forward to observing Seki-kun. When she turns her attention to Seki, she finds him quietly assembling a group of miniature bears on his desk. The anticipation builds as Seki-kun orchestrates a mountain-climbing expedition, with her unsuspecting classmate Takahiro Maeda becoming an unwitting participant in this imaginative venture. Despite the mundane classroom setting, Seki-kun's ability to transform mundane moments into captivating adventures shines through. Under Seki-kun's guidance, the miniature bears embark on an expedition to climb the mountain formed by Maeda's back. The clever use of everyday objects and classmates as elements in Seki-kun's creative endeavors remains a hallmark of the series. The combined imagination of Yokoi and Seki brings this miniature expedition to life, emphasizing the intricacies of the bear's movements and the dynamic landscape of Maida's back. Yokoi, unable to tear her eyes away, watches with excited anticipation as the miniature bears navigate the challenging terrain, creating a delightful and amusing spectacle within the confines of the classroom. As Seki emphasizes the movements of the bear on Maida's back, Maida suddenly feels an itch on his neck. He rubs his finger around his neck, and fortunately the bear, which was stuck earlier, manages to reach the top of his collar. However, a sudden move by Maida forces the bear out of the window. Both Yokoi and Seki rush to the window, and fortunately Seki manages to grab the bear with his strings. As the mountaineering expedition reaches its climax, Maida-kun finally notices that Seki-kun is up to something on his back. When Seki tries to attach a clip to Maida's collar and Yokoi tries to stop him, Maida turns around. Despite Yokoi's intervention, Seki continues his attempt. However, Maida becomes increasingly aware of Seki's actions. Whenever he senses Seki approaching, he looks back, causing Seki to eventually abandon his mission. The next day, as the teacher begins his lecture, Yokoi, who is also diligently taking notes, suddenly notices Seki-kun taking an RC car out of his bag. He puts it on the table and takes the opportunity to simulate a driving test scenario on his desk. The miniature setup includes traffic signs, a written driving test, and a remote-controlled car, turning Seki-kun's desk into an unexpected driving adventure. Yokoi once again becomes an unwitting observer of his unexpected driving adventure. Seki-kun's meticulous attention to detail is evident as he arranges the miniature driving course on his desk. The humor comes from the stark contrast between the serious nature of a driving test and the whimsical setting of Seki-kun's makeshift course. As Seki-kun navigates the miniature course with the remote-controlled car, he takes the simulation seriously and adheres to the rules he has previously studied. Despite his precautions, Seki-kun accidentally hits one of the obstacles with the car, showing genuine sadness. According to the rules of the course, he can only take the test once a day. The next day, Seki takes the test again, creating a dilemma for Yokoi as she tries to balance concentrating on the lesson at hand and observing Seki-kun's entertaining distractions. This time, Seki-kun successfully completes the RC car track with sincere intentions. After finishing the track, he starts to build something, which arouses Yokoi's curiosity. To her surprise, Yokoi realizes that Seki-kun is making his own driver's license, demonstrating an unprecedented level of seriousness. Seki-kun exuberantly raises his hand in triumph after completing his license. Meanwhile, the teacher, looking for the next student to solve a problem, sees Seki's raised hand and assumes he's volunteering. Seki, unaware of the answer, looks to Yokoi for help, but she decides not to help him. In a humorous twist, Seki offers Yokoi her own driving license and a chance to play with the car, but Yokoi remains determined not to help him. The next day, under the watchful eye of their teacher, all the students go to the school swimming pool for a water safety lesson. The teacher gives the lesson, emphasizing that the students should ask him if they have any questions. After the lesson, Yokoi seeks out Seki-kun to see what he's up to. To her surprise, she finds Seki enjoying himself with his classmates and next to him, a small family of robot toys that he had used in class earlier. The contrast between the serious context of the water safety lessons and Seki-kun's whimsical reinterpretation adds a layer of humor. Meanwhile, Yokoi is annoyed by Seki's impractical behavior, but can't help but find the robots adorable. A few minutes later, the teacher announces the end of the lesson, but as there is still some time left, he allows the students to use the swimming pool. Uzawa-kun seizes the opportunity and dives in first. Before entering the pool, Goto invites Yokoi to join her, 
but Yokoi declines, saying that she will join later. Instead, she looks for Seki-kun and the robot family, only to find Seki already in the pool, leaving the little robot family alone in a corner. Yokoi, frustrated by Seki's behavior, feels sorry for the robots. She decides to move them to a better place. While Yokoi is looking after the robot family, Uzawa-kun notices them and throws the robot child into the water. Yokoi is angered by Uzawa's actions and worries about the robot child's welfare. She spots it in Goto-san's hair and rushes to retrieve it. However, unbeknownst to Yokoi, Seki-kun, who is right behind Goto-san, grabs the robot child before she can reach it. When Yokoi arrives, she finds no robot in Goto-san's hair, thinking it lost. Yokoi dives in again to look for it. Meanwhile, the lesson is over and the teacher calls the students back. Yokoi continues to concentrate on finding the missing robot child. The scene unfolds during a lunch break, in which Rumi Yokoi finds herself both intrigued and slightly disturbed by Seki-kun's unconventional approach to the consumption of his homemade octopus sausages. The scene is set as Rumi Yokoi prepares to enjoy her meal, expecting a typical lunchtime routine. However, her plans are quickly disrupted by the eccentric eating habits of her desk neighbor, Seki-kun. As the lunch break begins, Diligent student Yokoi prepares to enjoy her meal. However, her attention is quickly diverted when she notices Seki-kun's peculiar way of eating the octopus sausages he has brought for lunch. Instead of the usual straightforward consumption, Seki-kun has turned his mealtime into a piece of performance art. Yokoi watches in fascination and mild disquiet. The scene turns into a spectacle, as Seki-kun treats his lunch like a culinary experiment. Each bite of the octopus sausage becomes a deliberate and exaggerated action, accompanied by theatrical gestures and facial expressions. Yokoi, caught between fascination and disturbance, becomes an unwitting spectator of Seki-kun's unorthodox lunch routine. The contrast between the ordinary setting of a school lunch and Seki-kun's imaginative twist adds a layer of comedy. The series continues to highlight the evolving dynamic between the two characters showing Rumi's ability to be drawn into Seki-kun's creative and unconventional world. As Seki-kun's lunchtime antics escalate, Rumi's internal conflict intensifies. On the one hand, she is disturbed by the deviation from the norm, but on the other, she can't help but be captivated by Seki-kun's sheer audacity and creativity. As Yokoi becomes increasingly perplexed by Seki-kun's antics, the narrative plays with the dynamic between the two characters. While Yokoi is initially disturbed by the unconventional behavior, her curiosity and amusement gradually take over. When Seki-kun gets tired of eating the octopus sausages, he gives the last of them to his classmates. But Yokoi is still sad about the octopus sausages, and her classmates also ask Yokoi if something is wrong when they see her upset. But Yokoi says that it is nothing, as there is nothing she can do now. As she gets over the octopus sausages, Seki-kun brings out apple slices in the shape of rabbits. And when Yokoi sees the slices, she feels bad again, as she cannot bear to look at them. The next day, the teacher starts the art class, and the story takes a unique turn when Rumi Yokoi is absent from school due to a cold. In her absence, Goto feels good as the art room means so much to her as she became friends with Yokoi in the same room, but also sad as Yokoi is not there for the day. And while thinking about Yokoi, she notices Seki-kun taking out a board from his desk and putting paper sumo wrestlers on it. And there she becomes an unwitting observer of one of Seki-kun's imaginative and entertaining escapades. To her surprise, she finds Seki-kun deeply engrossed in a game of paper sumo, complete with a miniature robot opponent. Seki-kun's paper sumo game unfolds as a spectacle on his desk, with meticulously crafted paper sumo wrestlers serving as his competitors. The atmosphere of the classroom is transformed into an imaginary sumo ring, and the paper sumo match becomes a captivating display of Seki-kun's creativity. From Goto's perspective, unaware of the playful nature of Seki-kun's activities, she interprets the paper sumo showdown as a possible consequence of a disagreement between Seki-kun and Yokoi. This misinterpretation adds a layer of humor, as the audience is aware of Seki-kun's innocent and imaginative pursuits, in contrast to Goto's assumptions. As the paper sumo match intensifies, Goto becomes increasingly invested in the supposed narrative of a conflict between Seki-kun and Rumi. While watching the match, Goto becomes over-invested in the game and suddenly kicks the chair in front of her that is next to Seki-kun. When Seki-kun sees the chair, he thinks it is the ghost of Yokoi, who is angry with him so he immediately stops playing the game. The next day, when Yokoi comes back to school, all her friends ask her if she's okay now. Yokoi assures them that she is better now. Meanwhile, Goto thinks that maybe Yokoi and Seki-kun have finally made up, which might be the reason for her happiness. 
As the day unfolds, the class gathers in the audiovisual room to engage in the seemingly mundane activity of watching an educational video. However, true to his nature, Seiki Kun transforms this ordinary setting into an engaging and imaginative game. Seki Kun seizes the opportunity to take on a unique challenge. He sets up a game of shogi versus chess, introducing an element of strategic gameplay into the shadows. The contrast between the serious nature of the instructional video and Seki Kun's whimsical diversion creates a humorous atmosphere. While Seki is playing, all the lights in the room are turned off so that everyone can concentrate on the video. Yokoi is pleased, thinking that this will stop Seki from playing the game. But when she looks back at Seki, she is shocked to see him in the darkness of the room. Seki is still playing the game, and the chess side wins the game, because they are the black ones who can work in the dark. And then Rumi Yokoi, always the unwitting participant in Seki Kun's escapades, becomes fascinated by the unfolding game and concentrates more on the game than on the instructional video. The darkness becomes the backdrop for a silent and strategic battle between the shogi pieces, symbolizing traditional Japanese chess, and the black chess pieces, representing Western chess. Seki Kun's ability to transform a simple classroom activity into a complex and entertaining game is on full display. As Rumi watches from her seat, she is eager to help the shogi pieces in their battle against the black chess pieces, but because of the darkness, she can't aim very well. And, feeling helpless, she sees some of the shogi pieces on the floor. Meanwhile, Seiki Kun, who wants to defeat the last shogi piece with chess, sees other shogi pieces on his desk, he throws them. But then other shogi pieces come back on the desk, he gets scared, but he throws them again. But Yokoi grabs the pieces and puts them back on Seiki's desk. Seeing them on the desk again scares Seiki Kun more than anything else. Seki then picks up the game and puts the pieces back and begins to pray, thinking that it is the work of ghosts. When Yokoi sees that Seki is no longer playing, she decides to go back to her seat, but as she moves back, she realizes that her skirt is stuck under Seki's chair. Seki kun introduces another unconventional and imaginative activity to the classroom. This time, the focus is on the traditional Japanese game of Fukuwarai, but with a unique twist. Seki kun plays the game blindfolded. The day begins with the class engaged with their teacher, and Seki kun, the master of finding ways to entertain himself, introduces another unconventional and imaginative activity into the classroom setting. This time it is the traditional Japanese game of Fukuwarai. Seki-kun then decides to put a blindfold over his eyes and takes out pieces of the game Fukuwarai, and relying solely on his sense of touch and memory, begins to play Fukuwarai, a game in which players are traditionally blindfolded. In Fukuwarai, facial features are placed on a blank face, and players aim to recreate a given face without seeing it. In Seki Kun's version, however, the blindfold adds an extra layer of challenge and humor to the game. When Seki puts it on her face, it looks like a funny face, which makes Yokoi laugh and draws everyone's attention to her, but she puts her head down and later everyone goes back to listening to the teacher. As the game progresses, Seki Kun creates a whole family out of the pieces of Fukuwarai, while Yokoi feels that it's no longer a game, and Fukuwarai's creation takes an unexpected turn turning into a narrative about family life. The facial features become characters in a unique and twisted family story, with each placement contributing to the unfolding saga. Rumi Yokoi, usually an unwitting spectator of Seiki-kun's creative endeavors, is drawn into the unfolding family drama. The blindfolded game of Fukuwarai becomes a collaborative effort as Yokoi tries to interpret and contribute to the narrative based on Seiki-kun's placements, so Yokoi blows some air with her book towards Seiki-kun's desk in an attempt to bring the parents closer together. But as she blows, the air disappears. Seki-kun's hand gets in the way, and when Seki-kun feels the flow of air on his hand, he gets so scared. When Yokoi realizes that she has made a mistake, she abruptly comes back to her seat, showing that she does not know the situation. In the meantime, Seki-kun immediately removes the blindfold from his eyes and finishes the game by giving the family a happy ending. Yokoi also feels good for them. The day begins as the class desks are pushed together for the purpose of sharing a printout, a setting prompted by the need to share a printout. This physical proximity creates an interesting dynamic as Rumi Yokoi finds herself inadvertently drawn into Seki-kun's world of entertaining distractions. As their desks are pushed together and the joint task begins, 
Rumi tries to focus on the task at hand, determined to ignore Seki-kun's potential distractions. But she looks at Seki. Realizing that he is upset about their joint task, she begins to laugh. But Seki-kun seizes the opportunity to engage in a series of card tricks. His intention is clear, to get Rumi's attention and provoke a reaction from her. The card tricks become a form of entertainment, transforming the shared space into a makeshift stage for Seki-kun's performance. Rumi, determined to concentrate on the task at hand, tries to ignore Seki-kun's antics. However, Seki-kun's card tricks are designed to attract attention, adding a layer of challenge for Rumi as she navigates between concentrating on the printout and resisting the urge to react to Seki-kun's performance. But Seki-kun, ever the master of creativity, decides to add an element of wonder to the mundane activity by performing a series of captivating card tricks. The juxtaposition of the practical task of sharing a printout with the whimsical world of card tricks adds a layer of humor and charm. Seki-kun's card tricks are not just a display of sleight of hand, but a symphony of visual illusion and misdirection, orchestrated to elicit a reaction from yokoi, turning the sharing of a printout into a light-hearted game of attention and distraction. Yokoi tries her best to ignore Seki-kun's new activity, but he keeps prompting her, diverting her attention from her studies to him. And when Yokoi is writing from the teacher's notes, she notices that Seki has hidden a card in the notes, provoking her to play with him. Yokoi gets very angry and throws the card back to Seki, who feels bad about it. Seki-kun's motive becomes more apparent as he tries to provoke a reaction from Yokoi. And Yokoi, despite her best efforts to stay focused, becomes increasingly captivated by Seki-kun's card tricks, and Seki-kun succeeds in his motive. When the teacher announces that he will be leaving at the end of the period, Yokoi is shocked, as she has been captivated by Seki-kun's entertaining activities throughout the period. The day begins as the teacher begins his lecture to the students, and as usual Yokoi goes about her work. But then she notices Seki-kun taking a collection of glasses out of his bag, and his desk is transformed into a makeshift optical boutique complete with an array of glasses of various shapes, sizes, and styles. As the class continues with its usual activities, Seki-kun's unconventional endeavor goes unnoticed by everyone except Rumi Yokoi, the unwitting spectator who often finds herself drawn into Seki-kun's imaginative escapades. Even in the unconventional context of a classroom, Seki-kun's dedication to finding the perfect pair of glasses adds a layer of humor and charm to the narrative. Seki -kun, with his characteristic flair for turning ordinary moments into extraordinary experiences, embarks on a quest to find the ideal pair of glasses to complement his look. Yokoi, initially focused on her own tasks, can't help but be intrigued by Seki-kun's peculiar activity. As she watches the glasses parade, she becomes a silent participant in the comic spectacle, offering commentary and reactions to Seki-kun's ever-changing appearance. When Seki is wearing a particular pair of glasses, Yokoi only looks at him, which makes Seki think that Yokoi is watching, so he looks at her, but Yokoi immediately moves her head. Seki then repeats the same thing twice, and when he thinks that she is no longer looking at him, he goes back to his thing. But when he checks the glasses again, he notices that Yokoi is watching him, and when Seki picks the glasses, Yokoi makes an angry impression and makes him pick another one. Seki puts his hand on each glass, but when he sees Yokoi's impressions, he immediately takes his hand off them. Yokoi wants him to choose a particular pair that will look good on him. And when Seki chooses that particular pair, Yokoi changes her expression to make him choose that pair. And when Seki puts the glasses on him, Yokoi also feels good for him. Seki-kun then puts the other glasses back in his bag as he has decided which pair he will wear. Yokoi then notices if Seki-kun wears the glasses the next time, but Seki doesn't wear them instead playing with other toys. The next day, Yokoi again looks at Seki and wonders if he is wearing the same glasses, but he still hasn't put them on. Which makes Yokoi very angry because he isn't wearing the glasses she made him choose. The day unfolds in a familiar classroom setting, but as the lesson progresses, Seki-kun subtly begins his artistic endeavor. This time, Seki-kun embarks on the creation of a flipbook comic within the pages of his textbook a process that draws the attention of his ever-watchful classmate, Rumi Yokoi. With a sense of purpose and a mischievous twinkle in his eye, he turns the blank pages of his textbook into a canvas for a flipbook. 
Seki-kun's meticulous approach to the flipbook is particularly fascinating. Not only does he draw a sequential narrative, but he goes one step further by recording sound effects to accompany the visual storytelling. Always attuned to Seki-kun's every move, Rumi Yokoi becomes increasingly curious about the outcome of his artistic endeavor. Rumi's anticipation grows as she watches Seki-kun's flipbook come to life on the pages of his textbook. When Seki-kun finishes his flipbook project, he packs up his things and puts them back in his bag, which increases Yokoi's curiosity about Seki-kun's project, but she cannot see the outcome of it. During the break, Yokoi goes back to the classroom to find out what Seki-kun has been doing. When she enters the classroom, she reaches for Seki-kun's desk and finds Seki-kun's bag. She immediately opens the bag and takes out the flipbook to find out what Seki-kun has been doing all this time. She wears the audio set that Seki recorded, and to her surprise, the flipbook symphony takes shape, revealing Seki-kun's imaginative and humorous storytelling. The sound effects, meticulously created by Seki-kun himself, add a layer of whimsy to the visual narrative, creating a multi-sensory experience for Yokoi, who also feels strange because the voices Seki-kun made are strange. When she hears the sound and music at the end of the audio set, she feels like she is in the imaginary world Seki has created, and while she is enjoying it, she finds a stamp from Tamaya Model Shop at the end of the flipbook, which makes her realize that it was nothing cool but an advertisement for the model shop, making Yokoi feel stupid. But Yokoi wonders who made the voice of a man at the end of the audio set, which is actually the voice of the owner of the shop. The next day, Yokoi's teacher calls her into his office. There, her teacher asks if she is all right, noticing her lack of attention lately. Yokoi assures her teacher that everything is fine, and during the meeting, she overhears some teachers discussing the announcement of a surprise inspection of belongings. This creates a buzz of anticipation and concern for Yokoi, who is ever vigilant about Seiki-kun's activities. She sees this as the perfect opportunity to see him face the consequences of his elaborate time-wasting projects. As the inspection day approaches, Yokoi becomes increasingly excited at the prospect of catching Seiki-kun red-handed. However, her initial enthusiasm takes an unexpected turn when she realizes that Seki has made little or no effort to hide his robot family, the usual stars of his imaginative endeavors. Yokoi worries about the chaos that will ensue during the inspection. Initially confident about Seki-kun's impending discovery, she becomes increasingly worried about the fate of the robot family. Seemingly indifferent to the inspection, Seki-kun leaves the robot family exposed on his desk adding to Yokoi's anxiety. The proximity between the mundane nature of the belongings inspection and the extraordinary presence of the robot family creates a humorous dynamic. Yokoi even tells Seki-kun to hide his things before the teacher approaches him. Seki-kun nods and hangs his things on a string outside the window. Yokoi feels relaxed, thinking that the robot family is safe. However, her relief is short-lived as she sees the toys again and becomes nervous about the consequences if the teacher catches Seki-kun playing with them. She urges Seki to hide them, and he immediately hides the mother and child robots in the lunchbox. But the father robot is still outside, making Yokoi even more nervous. She tries to tell Seki, but the teachers have arrived at Seki-kun's desk. The teacher inspects Seki, but can't find the robot, as Seki has already hidden it on his back, where Yokoi can see it but the teacher can't. After inspecting Seki, the teacher turns to Yokoi and finds a CD in her pocket. He asks Yokoi about it and she suddenly mentions the family, which catches the teacher's attention. He inquires further, but Yokoi dismisses it as nothing. The teacher takes the CD. Meanwhile, Yokoi gets very angry with Seki-kun for being so involved in Seki's affairs that she neglected her own. Later at home, Yokoi's mother asks her if she has done anything at school because her teacher is going to pay them a surprise visit at home. This makes Yokoi feel stupid and strange, 